ஒன்ஸ் ஒன்ஸ்ட்ரெஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்ட்ஸ்
it will accommodate uh, uh, per uh, one uh, one cubic feet of uh, volume so you cannot transport much of quantity uh, in one truck or in one transport so that is the main constraint uh, or demerit of these crop residues so then uh, so to make them effectively utilize uh, we can process them so that means uh, uh, so many processing methods are there uh, one is physical methods chemical methods and biological methods the physical methods is nothing but you have to uh, reduce the particle size either by grinder or chopping chopper that is soft cutting making it to smaller particles so that is uh, 1.5 to 2 cm to 10 cm are depending on the requirement uh, of the or uh, depending on the species of the animal uh, then uh, grinding uh, into the powder form uh, baling so uh, uh, block making pelleting all these will be different to physical forms are there and this the main objective of uh, uh, this physical processing is to reduce the particle size so that the surface area is increased and next followed by chemical methods is nothing but apply of uh, uh, chemicals like uh, uh, alkalis uh, that is uh, even sodium hydroxide calcium hydroxide but these are not feasible at uh, field conditions so then uh, then they develop urea ammoniation technique so that is also not that much uh, feasible because the, if you uh, add urea it may it will uh, also uh, break the nucleocellular bonds and as well as it will add uh, nitrogen to the uh, crop residue so that in both ways it uh, the it will be enriched uh, so but uh, it is also not uh, that much uh, feasible in practical conditions so then another next method is biological process it is uh, still it is under research only so that is nothing but the uh, that you have to treat with the uh, crop residues with the fungus and uh, the, the, uh, these will uh, break down the lignocellular bonds and uh, increase the digestibility and uh, nutrient utilization uh, but it is not uh, that much cost effective so it is uh, still under research only so because of all these reasons the feeding of small ruminants is very uh, uh, important and uh, it is very promising to feed uh, or include crop, crop residues by uh, using these all these processing methods and in farming system you will you should feed uh, the animals with the, all the sustainable diets so like uh, uh, concentrate ingredients and uh, uh, roughages but in, in case of here in complete diet system we are taking uh, uh, roughages uh, as uh, crop residues as roughages and uh, uh, because they are deficient in critical nutrients we had to include uh, uh, other nutrients in the form of concentrates that is the objective of uh, this uh, uh, complete diet system so definitely it will uh, improve the uh, nutrient utilization uh, it will uh, have impact on the uh, performance of the animal and uh, that is uh, and also if the because these crop residues are uh, available at a lower price definitely cost per kg livelihood can will also be reduced and uh, uh, at the whole uh, it is more economical so then concept of complete feed if you see what is called, uh, the complete feed it is nothing but uh, a blending of roughages and concentrate uh, concentrate ingredients together and it will be supplied as a sole feed to the animal in uh, so that the uh, nutrients are available in optimum proportions and quantities so it is nothing but balanced diet balanced diet have a blending of both roughages and concentrates here uh, in this com uh, complete ration with crop residues we are taking uh, crop residues as roughage material because our objective is to uh, sustain the farming system and to get the more uh, profit or uh, benefit to the farmers so the advantage of complete feed so it is uh, definitely it is reduces the feed cost that is the most important uh, uh, advantage and uh, increase the scope for using of cheap and bulky by products if you want to uh, utilize uh, crop residues unpalatable crop residues then uh, this complete feed uh, system will have access so the, that is uh, the important uh, advantage of complete feed then avoids refusal and unpalatable portion so there is no choosing or selectivity uh, sele uh, selectiveness of the uh, uh, what uh, feed uh, uh, feed particles or feed resources and uh, there will be less wastage of the uh, feed material then better feed consumption and utilization utilization and definitely uh, when come to the um, uh, storage of the space uh, because uh, when you store the crop residues in a normal as such form or loose form uh, definitely uh, they will occupy more space so to uh, re, uh, increase the bulk density uh, you have to process it either in, uh, chop or uh, uh, grind or pe uh, you uh, pelletize or uh, making it to block so definitely they will have 
uh, more uh, uh, accommodate uh, more uh, uh, quantities uh, in uh, uh, little space also so that's what increase uh, sport, uh, storage space then uh, easier transport then already i mentioned and feed bank so this is the most important uh, point uh, we should uh, uh, observe so because feed bank that means uh, when whenever there is uh, natural calamities like drought will come or flood come we have to prepare all these uh, complete diets and we can store and whenever there is necessary you can uh, transport uh, uh, these uh, feeds to the required areas so uh, actually uh, that that's what uh, these are called feed banks so then uh, another important point is uh, stable uh, room and environment so the room and uh, usually uh, the environment usually will be uh, having the ph so the optimum ph will be around 5.5 to 6.5 so that uh, for the microbial uh, digestion so that the ph will be stabilized so because uh, what will happen when you supply uh, concentrates so that there will be more uh, more uh, digestion of uh, carbohydrates uh, breakdown of carbohydrates and especially if it, if it is rich in starch and it will synthesize lactic acid first so this will may uh, reduce the ph further and this reduced ph definitely will uh, have a negative impact on the cellulitic bacteria so uh, to avoid all these things so, so if you supply all together uh, the room and ph will be stabilized and there will be supply of all the nutrients at a time so that is uh, the uh, important uh, uh, objective of uh, feeding complete diets and uh, fluctuation in the release of ammonia so this uh, this is uh, that is minimized Uh, if you supply concentrates and roughages separately, what will happen? The concentrates will uh, uh, will have protein, and that will be protein uh, uh, degraded by uh, microbes uh, into ammonia, and this ammonia is released. So then uh, again, uh, uh, because if the, the roughages are uh, fed later, so then uh, this ammonia is captured and again going to the liver, and where it is converted to urea, and again uh, uh, recycling, and all these will be uh, uh, doing. Uh, so when uh, the roughages are available along with so that uh, that uh, these will be utilized the roughages are utilized and cellulose and the hemicellulose and degraded and converting into volatile fatty acids it is uh, uh, um, uh, at the same pace or same rate and uh, efficiently so that is the important uh, point we should consider uh, here then better utilization of non protein nitrogen stabilization of the st to protonate uh, ratio then some reduction in methane emission so this is uh, more important because when you feed separately the crop residues uh, that are any roughages so there will be more pr production of uh, methane so definitely the uh, digestible energy which is being wasted in the form of methane emission can be uh, utilized efficiently by uh, uh, further post animal so then improved productive and reproductive efficiency definitely if the nutrient utilization will be affected and also Uh, because uh, especially in the uh, concept of complete feed system so i told that is the uh, optimum uh, fermentation optimum uh, environment will be maintained in the rumen so that the ph will be uh, uh, optimum ph will be maintained the complete diet uh, will be uh, considered the best some uh, of feeding uh, to the uh, small ruminants then uh, improvement of bulk density because uh, uh, there is a 500% increase in bulk density if you grind the uh, crop residues that much of the uh, uh, but uh, increase or increase in the bulk density you can observe and so that you can transport uh, uh, easily to wherever it is required so these are the crop residues uh, uh, most commonly used so paddy straw we uh, rice straw wheat straw uh, sorghum straw and dual purpose sorghum straw so this is more, most because especially this phule uh, chitra Uh, there is dual purpose sorghum stover is got uh, the advantage of uh, having the best quality of both sorghum seed and as well as the stover so that's what uh, uh, this has got uh, importance and uh, next is sweet sorghum stover uh, so it, which is also being uh, nowadays uh, uh, cultivated uh, especially this uh, sweet sorghum is used for the uh, ethanol production then maize stover pearl millet straw finger millet chick all the uh, Uh, legume uh, or pulse pulse straws like uh, chickpea red gram groundnut homs uh, then even we can use black gram and uh, green gram also uh, straws and uh, sweet sorghum bagasi so after uh, this uh, sweet sorghum straw that is uh, if it, this sweet sorghum uh, is uh, uh, harvested uh, for the ethanol production so then if it is being used so the whatever the residue comes out is called sweet sorghum bagasi so that can also be utilized and sugarcane bagasi is uh, 
uh, we are very aware of the sugarcane bagasi then sunflower straw sunflower heads so maize cobs so these these are sunflower heads after uh, the uh, seed removal whatever the heads available those can also be included in the diets and maize cobs so these because after uh, that is uh, threshing of these uh, seeds then uh, these maize cobs can also be utilized so if you see among the, all these uh, these uh, pulse straws will have more of lignin content so this is uh, uh, one thing we, we should remember uh, then uh, uh, if you see the uh, percent of uh, cp so these uh, red crumb straw has more it will be it ranges from uh, 7 to 9 percent uh, or sometimes it may be go up to even 10 percent the then groundnut worms uh, this has got uh, uh, high uh, protein content when compared to other crop residues uh, these are the inclusion levels uh, so uh, circumstrover can be included of up to 60 percent in a, as well as growing animals and uh, for maintenance purpose and uh, you know, for uh, uh, small leaders like uh, lactating animals but uh, in case of uh, uh, sheep and goat so you can include even in growing animals up to 60% also. If you include 60%, that uh, could be ec more economical. Uh, you can go up to 50 and 40% uh, also. If the average daily gain, if you want more, uh, based on the genetic potential of the breed, you can go up to uh, even 40%. Uh, uh, so then sunflower straw can also be included 30 to 50%. Then cotton straw up to 45%. Uh, then uh, sugarcane bagasi or sweet sorghum bagasi, whatever it with the uh, pulse straws, you can go up to 50 and even up to 60 percent also. So then come to the nutrient specifications of complete diets. Usually how much the complete diet uh, should have uh, the crude protein content, uh, then uh, uh, the energy content, uh, then calcium phosphorus levels and proportions. So usually for growing uh, animals like lambs and kids, so you can go up to 15 percent. That means if you are preparing complete diet uh, with these crop residues and concentrates together and that total complete diet uh, uh, should have uh, in between uh, uh, 11 to uh, 15 percent so that uh, it depends on the uh, type of uh, breed you are feeding and uh, how much of uh, your uh, average daily gain uh, usually the animal will get based on that you can uh, fix the proportion uh, sorry uh, cp level then maintenance it will be uh, it depends so even uh, eight to nine percent is also sufficient uh, up to 10 11 uh, no need to go for about uh, up to 13 point, uh, 13 percent then for lactating animals even go uh, up to 15 to 16 percent so these are the different other uh, uh, proportions levels then uh, here if you see the uh, uh, maintenance and unproductive uh, normal for uh, uh, ewes and uh, uh, rams if they are not under breeding condition uh, but, but in case of breeding okay uh, you can a uh, little bit uh, increase even go up to uh, uh, 60 percent of crop residues but for maintenance 70 percent uh, roughages uh, the crop residues are required uh, that means uh, sufficient and 30 percent concentrates uh, uh, is optimum then for uh, lactating dose because uh, if they are uh, uh, high yielders beginning depending on the, the lactation yield you can uh, uh, go for the proportions so for uh, 2 kg milk yield producing uh, uh, dose uh, uh, then uh, you can go for uh, uh, 50 is to 50 or 40 is to 60 then growing lambs you can go uh, 50 is to 50 is uh, actually optimum uh, then you can go up to 40 if the if you want more ADG and the 60 is to 40 also 60 roughage and concentrates uh, uh, 40 uh, usually we tried with uh, so many crop residues so that is more economical so uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, lower uh, ADG that with the less uh, 10, uh, 10 grams like the difference uh, but it is uh, uh, it was more uh, economical so then uh, these are the different uh, diet formulations uh, uh, with those uh, different crop residues if you take uh, maize over uh, it will be uh, if you if you want to include 50 percent uh, crop uh, maize over then the, the rest of the things are concentrate ingredients so like maize 7.5 uh, kgs that is parts it is for 100 kgs so uh, groundnut cake 9 parts DORB real rice plant 25 parts if molasses is available you can include or either uh, you can uh, compensate uh, or replace it with the maize. So then uh, mineral mixture uh, around 0.2 kg and salt 0.4 kg and vitamin mixer. Here because in case of uh, when, when you are feeding uh, uh, following intensive feeding system uh, especially with crop residues you have to take care of the this vitamin mixer having 
vitamin A and E. And D, okay, anyway, any, in intensive feeding system, if, uh, you are, if the animals are not allowed, uh, paddock is not uh, available, then you can go for vitamin D. But vitamin A, D are very, very essential because uh, uh, they are not uh, uh, feeding with the uh, green forest. So you have to take care of uh, uh, around uh, uh, for 100 kgs, uh, uh, the, the, uh, what, 10 grams of uh, vitamin mixture with uh, all the other vitamins with vitamin A and E. So this E may, may be, will be, the requirement will be around 975 international units and uh, uh, then uh, it will be, the vitamin A will be around uh, 7.5 lakh international units. So that you have to take care of. That is very important or crucial point, uh, uh, which can, uh, otherwise uh, uh, the entire system, because A and E are the antioxidant vitamins, if they're deficient, the entire, uh, 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 metabolism uh, gets affected. So that uh, 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 thing we have to take care of. So then uh, for these are the examples for uh, uh, lactating animals and growing uh, lambs and kids, uh, the be uh, best examples we tried. So then uh, we'll come to the processing of complete feeds because when we are blending the crop residues uh, uh, with uh, concentrate ingredients, I directly you can, uh, different forms are you can offer in different forms so one is directly the conventional system of feeding that is you have to chop the uh, crop residue then uh, if you want to soak soak it and then uh, while feeding you mix with concentrate and offer but uh, what will happen the palate the uh, definitely the, the intake of the feed will be comparatively lesser when you grind or uh, make into pellets or blocks. So that's what, uh, uh, if it is, uh, it is better to uh, grind, grind the crop residues and concentrate ingredients uh, into powder form and mix, uh, then you offer to the animal that will be always, uh, that will be more uh, beneficial. Then another, the important, another uh, processing method is uh, making them into pellet form. Expanded extrusion pelleting uh, can be used more efficiently uh, for the utilization of crop residues. Then another in the important uh, uh, processing method is uh, densification or block making. So complete feed block uh, is the, the most, most important because it is usually uh, the bulk density is improved a lot in case of block making. So that is more economical when compared to pellets and ma uh, mash form, especially to, uh, for the transport purpose. So then the preparation of mass, uh, usually uh, it will be taken in uh, batches wise, one batch means 100 kgs. So usually you need hammer mill with 8 mm sieve, a bucket elevator and horizontal mixer. After uh, grinding uh, the crop residues and uh, concentrates and these will be mixed in the mi uh, mixer uh, uh, for 10 minutes. So then your end product will come that will be stored. Meanwhile, uh, during the mix, uh, mixing process, you can add uh, molasses if it is available and uh, uh, the other mineral mixtures and vitamin or any feed additives you can add to the mixer directly. You can use even a, a chaff, chaff cutter and pulverizer also for uh, grinding and making into powder. Uh, then uh, you can uh, mix it. But for uh, mixer should be there. Otherwise, what will happen? Uh, if mixing is not uh, proper, so the nutrients uh, uh, availability will not be uh, at same pace in the uh, room end. So because uh, if they are not mixed, uh, especially if example, if they are in non-protein non nitrogen is available more uh, to, uh, in the room end, uh, uh, the, uh, with the lesser uh, supply of energy, then ammonia level may be raised. So all these uh, will definitely will have effect on the nutrient utilization. So this is a chopper come uh, grinder. Uh, it can be used to uh, grind the uh, crop residues as well as the concentrated ingredients. That's what uh, it first it reduces the particle, especially for crop residues, it reduce uh, into small particles, then it will grind into powder, uh, the, uh, very fine note uh, particles. So this is a mixer, then chopper come grinder and uh, mixer in combination also we'll get. So then uh, this is the fabricated one uh, with the chopper grinder come mixer. Then come to the pelleting uh, process, uh, it, uh, it includes expanded and extrusion uh, uh, methods uh, and an uh, expander uh, uh, is uh, nothing but uh, the difference uh, between uh, the block making and uh, here expander extrusion is here we apply the moisture so that uh, in the presence of uh, uh, moisture uh, uh, temperature high pressure 
So first, uh, what will happen? The entire uh, feed may, will be expanded, and the, and the pressure, if it is passed through the, the constriction, so it will be the the feed will be coming out uh, uh, in the form of pellets. So usually, 16 mm uh, diameter containing uh, uh, pellets are recommended for sheep and goat. So for this purpose, first you have to prepare the mash form or ground form. Uh, after mixing whatever the product you will get grinding and mixing so that has to be fed to the uh, this uh, pelleting ex uh, expander and extrusion uh, machine so and before that you had to add a little bit moisture to make it into 17 to 18% otherwise you can use uh, steam generator but uh, uh, you can also add it outside and you can uh, put in the machine so that uh, in the presence of uh, moisture so uh, the advantage is the whatever the starch pre uh, present uh, in the uh, feed, uh, it gets gelatinized so that the palatability definitely will be improved when compared to either block or mash. And also nutrient titillation will also be definitely improved. One to feed intake will be improved. Everything will be improved when compared to other forms of the processing method. So this is expander extruder. Feed will be extruded. Here the sieves are fixed. So through the sieves, uh, uh, under pressure, the feed is uh, will come out in the form of pellets. So these are the uh, pellets usually offered to the animals. Then uh, complete uh, uh, feed block uh, preparation. Uh, it is uh, after preparation of mash, uh, it has to be exposed to the compaction with the hydraulic uh, pressure. So uh, usually uh, 7, 7 7.5 HP of the motor is required. Actually, in case of expanded extruder, so here because we are using moisture, so a steam, so that is moisture has to be converted to steam. So because of that reason, uh, it requires the higher HP containing around 50 HP. HP containing motor you require. So in case of grinder and mixer, you can use so say 20 HP containing grinder and uh, 7 pan, uh, 5 HP containing mixer for the preparation. Usually we can prepare uh, uh, around uh, 200 to 250 kg of crop residues for grinding purpose per hour. Uh, the capacity will be. So th these are minimum capac capacity sampling. So then uh, uh, mixer can handle even uh, 600 to 800 kg uh, per hour. So when come to the expander extruder, uh, you can uh, have around uh, uh, 500 to uh, 600 kg uh, per hour, uh, depending on the uh, roughest proportion. So then come to the block making. So different uh, block making uh, uh, machines are available uh, with uh, different capacities. So usually this, uh, this will be uh, very uh, with small quantity and uh, with the minimum cost uh, uh, with uh, 7.5 HP motor. Uh, manually we can ha handle that is electric motor is required but uh, uh, the other methods are manually you have to put uh, feed and uh, uh, the removal and everything will be manual so this uh, may do blocks uh, uh, for every 200 uh, 200 kg uh, per every hour so these are the different uh, 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 processing uh, processed feed offering to the animals the effect of uh, this uh, processing or uh, complete diet's uh, effect on the nutrient utilization dramatic intake. So if you observe, um, when come to the conventional system, uh, definitely the processing uh, methods will uh, definitely will improve the dramatic intake and the diet stability is also uh, the uh, protein diet stability, organic matter diet stability, fiber diet stability. Uh, and, but here when come to the uh, individual, when come to the fractions of fiber, because uh, definitely if the voluntary intake is uh, increased, uh, because the dry matter intake is more, uh, definitely to accommodate in the rumen, the passage rate uh, of the feed uh, will be uh, faster so that the retention time in the rumen will be reduced. So that the rumen microbes cannot uh, act um, on entire particles so that the digestibility may be reduced, especially uh, with the fiber. But it, whatever the nutrient utilization will be compensated by taking more of feed intake. So that's what uh, these are uh, little bit uh, decrease in the digestibility of fiber because of the increased feed intake, increased passage rate and less retention time. Otherwise, uh, the entire uh, uh, nutrient utilization will be improved and dry matter intake or voluntary feed intake will, will, also, will be improved. So these are the DCP, DCP that is digestible uh, uh, food protein and energy will also be improved based on the pulled up uh, data. Average daily gain uh, will be more in the pellet form of uh, uh, feeding uh, uh, followed by block making than mash. 
so here because uh, the palatability is more and the even nutrient utilization will also be more because of the gelatinization of the starch here what will happen in the pellet form so uh, the resistant uh, even some starch is also resistant to uh, to the microbial digestion so that starch may be released in case of pelletization so in in case of block making that pellet uh, that uh, gelatinization is not there uh, but even though it is uh, uh, beneficial then to the mash or conventional feeding system feed efficiency ratio so usually because if in case of higher uh, that is high genetic potential rate containing breeds it will be even go up to 9 kg and 8 kg also so that means for 1 kg of produce and production of meat uh, that is grow uh, live body body weight gain so you require around uh, 10 kg of feed uh, so the, the cost if you take this this was connect uh, based on the recent studies so uh, there there was a improvement in uh, around uh, 14% uh, uh, improvement uh, uh, over mash feeding and uh, when if you compare the pellet feeding with mash feeding and there there was 10% improvement uh, over uh in case of uh, black making that means pelletization definitely will have 10% more cost benefit ratio when compared to the other two farms when block making they will have definitely uh, cost benefit ratio over mash farm and uh, conventional form of the feeding so then cost if you see the cost economics uh, cost uh, cost of the feed uh, uh, will be around uh, Uh, because they based on the type of crop residue so usually it ranges from even 10 rupees per kg to even up to 15 k 15 rupees depending on the crop residue use even uh, sometimes it may be decreased to even uh, even 9 rupees also so uh, based on the availability locally availability of the crop residue so then uh, when come to the processing so definitely because here the steam generation is required the uh, horsepower of motor is more so definitely cost is more in case of pelletization when compared to the block making and mash preparation but it will be compensated by uh, uh, compensated with more uh, average daily gain and more feed efficiency then come to the bulk density uh, so among all these processing methods uh, uh, block making is more beneficial so definitely it will be more beneficial for the transport Uh, just we will have a glance on the uh, uh, different type of crop residue based diets so cereal or millet straw based completion so usually we studied with uh, uh, that is sorghum stover uh, maize stover and uh, sweet sorghum stover so uh, among all these uh, uh, stovers so sweet sorghum stover uh, uh, has given uh, more uh, average daily gain so the proportion of roughest to concentrate ratio was 60 is to 40 that is 60 is uh, Uh, crop residue and 40 is concentrates and the uh, feed had uh, 11.3% of pure protein uh, then come to the other crop residues like sorghum straw sweet sorghum maize straw and controlled uh, that is with only grazing system uh, if you compare so all these uh, uh, have got uh, uh, more beneficial that is more average daily gain when compared to the normal grazing system so the refuse proper refuse constant proportion was 50 is to 50 and cp percent of the uh, feed was 12.5% so here if you see the uh, these are the low protein high energy diets low protein low energy high protein high energy and high protein low energy but among all these low protein high energy diet has given good result or good adg around 120 grams so uh, uh, that means even if you if you want to increase more of protein also it will not be beneficial so if you see the diet composition so around 57% uh, is uh, of uh, uh, crop residue in case of low protein high uh, energy diet and if you see the low protein high energy diet the protein content is 12 around 13% the energy is around 9 megajoules per kg of the diet so that's what so even if you reduce uh, if you optimum provide optimum protein level and with little little amount of energy so you will have uh, better uh, adg average daily gain when come to the one by one the sorghum stover can be included up to 60% and maize stover you can uh, go up to 50 to 60% for optimum growth and uh, better feed efficiency then paddy straw uh, paddy straw uh, uh, if you supply uh, either in mash form or expander and block so definitely pelleted diet has got uh, uh, higher uh, growth rate in terms of growth rate and nutrient utilization if you include it to 50 uh, is to 50 ratio then uh, wheat straw you can also include up to 50 ratio especially 
uh, in case of uh, if you include in adult sheep there will not be any effect on the digestibility and the uh, nutrient utilization then oats straw can also be included up to 30% along with other uh, straws or tree leaves then finger millet straw you can include up to uh, 50% because uh, uh, maize straw can also be included 50%. You can uh, even replace the maize straw with finger millet straw if available. Higher age and nutrient utilization, it's in the Deccan Elam's wet brown paddy straw. So, that, uh, so uh, in case of that is depending on the type of breed, you can uh, uh, decide the. You can also include uh, sorghum straw and soybean straw in uh, uh, such type of crop residues. Here, uh, in case of uh, complete diets, uh, you can also you can replace the maize grain. Uh, with uh, other uh, cereal grains like uh, broken rice and uh, uh, that is millet uh, jowar. When we studied, we observed the higher seminal uh, performance uh, in case of rams with jowar grain, uh, then followed by uh, uh, broken rice and maize. So if you see the uh, dual purpose uh, sorghum stovers, uh, among these, Fula Chitra has got. Uh, uh, better uh, results uh, when you uh, use these uh, dual purpose crop race uh, sorghum stover. So uh, you will get around, uh, especially in case of the cross of Nellur Dakkani Ram, so we uh, achieved uh, around 75 grams of uh, ADG. And this is uh, 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 processed uh, crop race, uh, sorghum, dual purpose sorghum stover based crop residues. This is chopped one, uh, mash and pellet and uh, block. Again, the pellet has, uh, has given better results. Uh, uh, around reaching 90 grams, 85 to 90 grams of ADG. We, all, we can also include uh, other unconventional uh, protein sources along with the uh, in the complete diets. So uh, we replaced the groundnut cake with the guar meal, and we st uh, studied the uh, average uh, that is productive uh, growth performance in Nellur Ryan lands. This is replacement of groundnut cake with guar meal. So uh, you can replace uh, little extent, 50% uh, uh, with the vermin. Uh, then uh, next is, uh, uh, we studied even uh, same diets uh, on uh, uh, reproductive uh, Dakani eaves. Uh, we achieved uh, good results uh, with uh, on reproduction of, uh, that is reproductive performance after uh, lambing. So the stress response and net return rate and uh, conception rate, lambing rate, all uh, uh, were good at uh, uh, GNC, then followed by replacement of 50% uh, groundnut cake with uh, guar meal. Then pulse straw based complete diets. So complete field chickpea straw. So chickpea straw usually it occupies around 65, uh, India, usually India occupies around 68% of global production. And the uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, UP, Karnataka, uh, then the AP and Telangana contribute around 91% of the production. So if you see among all the uh, pulse straws, so the uh, chickpea straw occupies uh, more proportion, major proportion uh, in the uh, uh, cropping pattern. So uh, one example, so we, we replaced the sorghum strover with 50% uh, with red, uh, chickpea straw and 100% uh, with chickpea straw. These were conducted in Dakani lands. So the average daily gain was improved. Uh, when uh, come to the event, th that means we can replace sorghum stover with the chickpea straw. Uh, then uh, red gram straw, that is ara straw. So uh, with, uh, uh, even with the inclusion of, uh, uh, especially uh, ara straw with uh, 35 to 50 percent, uh, these are the different diets, 35 to 50 percent pellet and mash form. So uh, the ADG was around 94 to 95 grams. That means uh, we can uh, include uh, even up to 50% in the diets of the uh, either lambs or kids. So 50% level, uh, you can uh, even uh, uh, process into pellets. Then come to the groundnut harms. So it will have more CP. Then uh, because of that reason, you can include up to 60% in the completions. Groundnut harms and the red gram busa in combination also, you can feed to the goats and uh, lambs efficiently. In case of uh, complete pellets, uh, especially in case of uh, 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 goats, that is for bucklings. So you can, if you can maintain uh, around 15, uh, 15 per own, uh, percent of uh, protein level and you can include uh, uh, crop residues in the diets. Then in, uh, along with uh, crop residues in complete diets, you can also include uh, tree leaves. So this is what the important uh, uh, because when come to the tree leaves, these are abundantly available. 
and uh, it, uh, this, these tree leaves can also uh, act as uh, uh, protein uh, supplements. Then uh, and uh, it will definitely these will rich in minerals and vitamins, so that it, they will have positive impact on the rumen microbial growth and digestion. Then one more thing, important point we should consider here is tree leaves will be having the tannins, especially condensed tannins, uh, uh, will be acting uh, as antiparasitic and they will reduce the warm burden. So that uh, advantage also they have got. So uh, in case of fallen tree leaves, especially in forest areas, if you have uh, got fallen tree leaves, those can be dried and uh, can be included in the 20% of 20% uh, in the complete diets. Then Ucina, that is uh, subabul leaves, can be included up to 20%. Uh, and you can replace uh, even uh, other uh, uh, protein sources uh, like mustard cake or groundnut cake. And you can prepare into block. That is, you can even you can process into blocks. So these are the tree, different tree leaves you can include in the complete diets. These are the different uh, the protein levels of uh, CP. If you see the Moringa, Moringa can also be included. So it will have highest CP when compared to other tree leaves. Then Subabul, Albizia, that is Ceres, uh, and um, Acacia. So all these will have rich in uh, uh, protein levels and Glaricidia. So these can be included in the complete diets, either in, in the form of mash, or you can also prepare into pellets and blocks. Especially when come to the uh, blocks, uh, adhesiveness should be uh, there in the preparation of uh, block. For that purpose, definitely you should have uh, the molasses. Usually we tried with uh, different adhesive ingredients uh, which can provide adhesiveness. So molasses has got better results. Then you can also use guar meal because it will have residual gum and also you can use uh, condensed distillery solubles but uh, with uh, little quantity only uh, you can add. So then uh, the other uh, tree leaves like neem uh, you can add up to 30%. You can add any leaf mixture up to 30% in the uh, lamb rearing. And uh, in case of uh, corridor sheep, they are tried with 40% uh, surface based complete diet with uh, uh, rations containing 40 and 50, uh, that is, uh, with mixed tree leaves. Then uh, neem, so you can, uh, neem leaves, you can add up to 40%. Bobble parts, you can add up to 16.5%. Then bobble uh, parts uh, can also be included in 33% in concentrated mixture. Then one, one more uh, thing is uh, prosopis. Uh, so this, uh, this will be, can be used up to 50% in the complete diets. So this is uh, one uh, with 20% subabul leaves with chickpea straw. These, these are the chickpea straw based complete diets with 20% subabul leaves. We tried with different levels, uh, with up to 30% also we tried, but uh, blocks were not uh, prepared well. So 20% is optimum to include, uh, especially chickpea straw based. Uh, so these are the, 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 this is the composition, chickpea straw 60% and uh, uh, leaf meal uh, in case of uh, uh, subabul uh, uh, 20% and albizia 20%. Even albizia uh, blocks uh, were also prepared. So then other crop residues uh, like you can also use cotton stalks uh, up to 38, that is around 40% with uh, uh, we can achieve around 95 grams of ADG. Then uh, Cotton stocks with 40%, uh, uh, so that uh, higher ADG uh, come. When, uh, again, in between the uh, lambs and kids, uh, the lambs recorded higher growth rate if you include 40% of cotton stocks. Then the sunflower heads, so sunflower heads can also be uh, included uh, with uh, uh, and with pelleting also. So up to uh, even 50% sunflower heads you can include along with even sorghum straw also up to 60% crop residues you can include and uh, prepare the. Uh, diet. This is so, so sorghum stover and with sweet sorghum bagasi in different forms. So the average uh, uh, day, daily gain was around 100 grams in pelletized uh, sweet sorghum bagasi based diets. So then uh, uh, maize cobs, uh, you can include uh, uh, up to 50%, 40 to 50% in the TMR. Then mustard up to 60%, you can include. Then come to the sugar cane bagasi. So this because uh, the sugarcane pagasi definitely will have more of uh, more fibrous and more spore, more pores in nature. So uh, that's what you can uh, include even up to 35% or 20% to 35% is sufficient. So more than you cannot, uh, if you include, uh, you will definitely the rumen uh, digestive uh, system will be affected. Uh, then uh, you can uh, uh, use urea aminated sugarcane pagasi, but this is not that much feasible. Then supplementation of feed items. So in case of complete diets, you can also 
along with uh, uh, refugees and concentrates, along with if you want to include tea leaves, uh, other un unconventional uh, feed ingredients, you, you can also add feed additives. So to improve the uh, nutrient digestibility and nutrient utilization and overall performance of the uh, sheep and goat. So in case of uh, uh, complete diets, you can include thermotolerant yeast up to 0.1% level in the diet. So that uh, uh, even during processing also, uh, the yeast, uh, it, it, it may be, it is acting as probiotic and it can improve the uh, digestibility uh, in the rumen. And uh, mo moreover, the yeast action is uh, to stabilize the pH and uh, providing the uh, sustainable environment to the rumen microbes. So in that way, definitely will be helpful uh, for the better nutrient utilization uh, of complete diets. Then uh, uh, supplementation sodium bicarbonate. So this is more important uh, when uh, if because if, if you want more uh, average daily gain, so definitely you will you, you will uh, uh, increase the uh, concentrate proportion more in the complete diet. So even sometimes uh, uh, to achieve even up to 200 grams of ADG, you may go up to even 30% uh, crop residue and 70% of concentrates. At that time, you should include the sodium bicarbonate. Definitely, it will uh, uh, it will act as neutralizing agent so that and it will uh, uh, the pH will be maintained uh, in the rumen and it will reduce the uh, rumen acidosis because uh, if you uh, include more of concentrates, definitely the rumen acidosis and it, it may lead to metabolic acidosis and it may lead to uh, uh, laminitis. Uh, uh, in the uh, animals. So to avoid and it may affect the even uh, in case of adults uh, use uh, reproduction may also be affected. So to avoid such situations, so definitely if you include uh, sodium bicarbonate, so 20 grams to the one kg of concentrate and because uh, uh, as per the concentrates, if you include and with, uh, along with crop residues, if you prepare, uh, if you uh, mix it, so then uh, uh, it may uh, reduce all these things and improve the uh, fiber digestion because if the acidosis, rumen acidosis uh, condition uh, prevails, so definitely the fiber digestion may uh, get affected. So to uh, avoid such uh, situations, uh, always uh, it is advisable to feed sodium bicarbonate. Then uh, supplementation of uh, ammonium chloride. This is uh, uh, this is this may also act as uh, uh, neutralizing agent. Uh, but one more advantage uh, with this. Uh, uh, ammonium chloride is uh, uh, it will usually reduce the pH of urine and it will also reduce uh, uh, increase the uh, uh, excretion of calcium phosphorus uh, and it will avoid the urolithiasis uh, condition. So in that way, this will be helpful and it can also be included at 0.5 percent of the uh, diet. So then you can also include uh, some of the uh, that is to reduce the warm burden. You can also, uh, in the complete diets, you can you, uh, include uh, uh, albendazole like uh, uh, drugs in the uh, complete diet to avoid uh, uh, warm burden in the animals. So, uh, usually in complete diets, uh, feeding of complete diets, uh, the warm burden definitely will be lesser when compared to the uh, offering of uh, com uh, green fodder. Uh, and uh, come to the extent system of uh, our semi intent system of rearing. So with this, uh, uh, I can conclude uh, that uh, the feeling of complete diets uh, with the crop residues, uh, uh, which are going to waste, will help in production of more nutritious meat, improvement of reproductive efficiency, better animal health status, and definitely with uh, 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 good monetary benefits to the farmers and uh, making the wealth from waste. Thank you.